Okay, look, 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 I'm gonna give you this. Message to all Russian women. Like, I really need you to see this. A little god on a big stage. That's something I wanna do. We have some amazing jazz clubs. Amazing. I will say, I like a lot about Russia. I wish he was a woman. No, I don't. I wish I was Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I put a spell on you because you're mine. This is it. This is it, this is how I end. 21 years old, shot in the head in Rio. I make the lighting nice, I put on Frank Sinatra. It takes two minutes, but I put romance into my life. It's Russia. I can't take it away from you guys. You have the most beautiful women. You really, 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 really have some beautiful women. You could have been everything. Look at what you've got. You're perfect. And you ruin it with this spoiled personality. I hope that I'm still being valuable in 200 years. Whether or not they like me, I don't really give a shit. I will say, I like a lot about Russia. Russia is a place, before I came to Russia, I thought it would be very different. I thought it would be very cold, with very serious people, and um, a very difficult life. I come here, the food is incredible. The people are incredible. My favorite thing about Russia really is the people. Uh, I meet some of the kindest people I've ever met in Russia. They're very warm. Like, Russia has this thing where for the first five minutes, if they don't like you, they're not gonna pretend to like you. But when they like you, they really mean it. And it's a very sincere country. And I really like that. And I like Banyas. The best things in my country are free. One thing I love about London is it's very easy and cheap to have an amazing life. Okay, the rent is expensive, okay. But the best thing to do in London is to go to the parks. We have incredible parks. Then you can go to any museum. Historical museum, art museum, everything is free. And it is world-class stuff. Every week there's a new exhibition, there's a, a new gallery, there's a new something. Um, I like to take a bicycle. I mean, just bicycle around London, dude. It's, it's insane. There is one coffee shop called Monmouth, which is the best coffee. Uh, that's not free, but, but I had this philosophy right on coffee. So you want a luxury life, luxury life, luxury life. Okay, good. If you like cars and you want a luxury life, you can have a Ford and it's like 20,000 or you can have a Ferrari and it's like 250,000. But if you like coffee, like a good coffee is like four pounds and a bad coffee is three pounds. So you can have like luxury life and it's one pound. Um, but Monmouth coffee, that is an incredible thing in London. Uh, what else can I say? Oh, fuck. We have some amazing jazz clubs. Amazing. Ronnie Scott's. Ronnie Scott's is the best jazz club in the world. Really. The 606 club. Ah, oh. <laughs> It's so fucking good. Yeah, London's cool. <laughs> it's funny because if you didn't say British, I would tell you uh, some some other musicians and uh, then my people will hate me. <laughs> uh, okay, you might not agree with this. I don't really give a fuck. Number one is Robbie Williams. My God, this guy is a hero to me. And I know that I should say something like the Beatles or something like this. Robbie Williams to me is such an incredible, incredible, incredible guy. He's an amazing entertainer. He's, him and Freddie Mercury are so close. I know that like he copies his style quite a lot and I know he's a big inspiration. Robbie Williams is the reason I'm a musician. I was 11 years old and I watched him playing Nebworth. 600,000 people, no alcohol, and everyone's just jumping up and down. Everybody is in paradise. And I see this man, he is like God, a little God on a big stage. And I'm like, wow, that's something I wanna do. That's worth my time. So there is Robbie Williams. He's like a god, and then the down we come. <laughs> Actually, also very close is uh, the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones to me, it's the sound of freedom. Everything they did embodied this intellectual liberalization, this kind of, uh, and is, it feels like at the end of a massage when I listen to the Rolling Stones. A lot of people get amped up. I can't get no, but I'm just, I'm like, ah. Oh. It's like a massage to me. I... Um, who else do I love? Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I've been through phases of music in my life. In the 90s, I was obsessed with Oasis. I have the same hair, I have the same jacket. Um, I love stereophonics. 
Um, who else do I really love? There's a lot of great British musicians. Uh, really, Jamie Cullum, I think he's fantastic. I've seen him many times. Um, I love Amy Winehouse. I thought she was a, a fucking genius, and she's a perfect example of why you shouldn't do drugs, because what a fucking waste. We could have had another 50 years of music from her. What a fucking waste. You know, we have some good music. We have Adele, we have Coldplay, we have... But, okay. The Little Prince, my favorite book. This book has so much life and wisdom in it. I read that book at so many points in my life and I'm just blown away. It is, it has all of life in that. It's such an inspiring book to me. You can read it in one hour. Always, always when I read this book, I take something from it. It's, I think it's just incredible. And the same author uh, has another book called Wisdom in the Sands, Wisdom of the Sands, sorry. In incredible book. This is a longer book. It maybe takes two or three days to read. Uh, I think it's stunning writing. The ability to put something very, very wise in a very simple, childlike, playful way. Jonathan Livingston Siegel, another amazing book. It's this ability to say something really profound in a way which is even a five-year-old can understand. I think the truth of this universe can be understood by anybody. And when I find books like this that manage to do it in a way which is playful and, and light and beautiful, that to me is like, better than anything. It's better than some 600 page philosophy from a serious guy who's going to tell you all about life. Like, that's so pretentious. There's something so beautiful about the ability to tell such a simple story. There is a little boy, he comes from a planet, he comes to our planet. It's so beautiful. The ability to do that is genius. I think I've honestly watched pretty much every single film. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I've definitely watched like IMBD's Top 1000, 100%. Every time I'm on a flight, I watch movies and I'm a complete geek for me. I'm a complete geek for movies. And uh, what can I tell you? Like, okay, what are the best movies? Meet Joe Black, incredible. Uh, Vanilla Sky, Magnolia, um, The Last Samurai. Fuck, The Last Samurai is so good. Um, I like these movies. We don't make movies like this anymore. Like, Meet Joe Black, it's about death, falling in love. That's so interesting to me, but now all the movies are the same. It's always like, there's a guy, there's a girl, they have a slightly funny thing, he cheats, she cheats. It's the same fucking movie. All we have is the same movie over and over and over again. The superhero movie, it's the same fucking movie over and over and over again. There's no creativity anymore. And I understand why, because these movies are made by people in suits, and they only want to put their money onto something which was successful before. So there is no creative ideas. For me, the best era of movies is like the 80s and 90s. Movies like... Vanilla Sky, what an incredible movie. Magnolia, incredible movie. Uh, uh, Cloud Atlas, incredible movie. Like, we don't make movies like that anymore. Pulp Fiction, fucking incredible movie. Um, this is like something really creative. They're daring, they're doing something. Uh, I liked that movie Prisoners with Hugh Jackman. That was, that was pretty fucking cool too. Interstellar. Um, man, I, I can go for a long time. Crazy Stupid Love. Crazy Stupid Love. I've seen that movie probably more than any other movie. I'm in love with Ryan Gosling. Really. I wish he was a woman. No, I don't. I wish I was Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I have a theory, by the way. I don't think Leonardo DiCaprio has made one bad movie. Denzel Washington, Kevin Spacey, Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't think they made one bad movie. The Aviator. That's another fucking incredible movie. The most beautiful thing in a woman is kindness. I'm not interested in love. I'm interested in admiration. Love is a cage. Love is you are mine. I put a spell on you because you're mine. Is not as high of an emotion as admiration. Admiration is, I, I love the way you are living. I love who you are. I want to flow strength to that. I want to see you fly, not keep you in a cage. So when I think about what qualities in a woman uh, I like, I think about what do I admire? And what do I find beautiful is kindness. I think kindness is the most beautiful thing in the world. I don't think it's some girl with plastic lips and big tits. So what? You're just a, you're just a nice object. But I care about the person who is in that. I care about the person that I would share my life with. I care about, look, I want a best friend. Uh, I'm a single guy. And when I think about the woman who I will spend my life with, 
I want somebody kind. I want somebody who is fun, who is light. I don't need some serious person and everything's a problem and blah. It's not who I am. I play with life. Life is playful. I'm not so serious. Life is just a little game. It's something to do. We're here for a while and then we're gone. I don't need serious people, heavy people, big, big, heavy people. I don't need this. For me, like the most attractive qualities is this, this lightness, this playfulness, an, an overwhelming kindness, somebody who lives in service of other people, somebody who genuinely takes pleasure in the pleasure of others, somebody who is more interested in the group than themselves, somebody who lives for something bigger than themselves, somebody who wants to do things which are bigger and broader and wider than their little world. Somebody whose focus is not Gucci and Louis Vuitton and, oh, look at my hair, and my hair is so sexy. I don't give a shit. Dude, I don't give a shit. I appreciate beauty, but for me, like, beauty is not big lips and big eyelashes. That Beauty is some calm, serene, kind girl with a sincere smile on her face, and you can see in her eyes that she cares. I think the beauty of womanhood, the beauty that only a woman can have, is this caring, nurturing, loving spirit. This is what makes a woman, like this is what makes femininity beautiful, is this capacity to love which women have, this capacity for kindness which a woman has, this capacity to nurture, to care. Like that to me is the most attractive thing. A woman who is just completely comfortable with herself and, and kind and, and beautiful in her soul. And I create romance in everything I'm doing. When I'm cooking, I'm not just cooking. I make it something. If I'm cooking eggs, everybody else, they just get their eggs, they put it in the pan. I don't do this. I make the lighting nice, I put on Frank Sinatra. It takes two minutes, but I put romance into my life. I create this romance in my life. When I'm having a shower in the evening, I don't just get in the shower. This is strange, but I shower in the dark. I turn off all the lights and I just shower. Why do I do this? Because I can feel the water and I feel like, oh, it's so beautiful. And it reminds me of this time when I was in Costa Rica and I have a shower outside and I can see all the sky. Like I'm able to put romance in my life all the time and it only takes like one minute extra to make these moments really nice and special. Um, yeah. I think uh, the most, it's funny. The most beautiful country I've been to is Brazil. Brazil, eu amo Brazil. Um, Brazil's an incredible place. The people are very, very beautiful. And it's like a moral thing there. You know, if you're in Rio, it's like a point of ethics that you have to have a six pack and huge pecs. And I didn't see anybody who is overweight. Everybody is healthy. On every corner, it's not a McDonald's, it's like a protein shop. All down the beach, they have these gyms. And people really, really take care of themselves. That's very beautiful. But at the same time, there's like this kind of obsession with self, which is a little bit ugly. They're a little bit obs like, you know what I mean? Like, let me give you a different answer. Okay. The most beautiful country. It's really difficult to answer what is the most. Woman, just woman. Just woman. Yes, just woman. Face, clothes, bodies. Okay, let me. I'm gonna give you this answer. Okay. The country with the most beautiful women. Okay. There is there is different answers for different reasons. So, in Brazil, like. These girls are so beautiful. They smile. I remember I went dancing in Brazil and I'm in this club and I'm covered in sweat and I'm dancing and I'm dancing and then this girl came up to me and she had the most beautiful smile and she just came up with a big smile and asked me to dance. Hey, you wanna dance? And I was like, that is so beautiful. It wasn't like, hey, do you wanna dance? Hey, do you wanna dance? It wasn't like that. It was just like this beautiful, she just wants to dance and have fun and I found that so sexy and uh, it was beautiful and we danced, yeah, that was nice. So I found that very beautiful. I, I was in Norway three days ago. That is the most beautiful country I've ever been to. The men, the women, they are ridiculously beautiful. Uh, their skin is like a fish um, and they don't wear too much makeup. Everything is natural. There is no like, uh, everything is just naturally beautiful and they wear like beautiful colors and beautiful, everything about that country is so minimal and the quality is so high and they are kind. And of course, the answer which everybody will give 
is Russia. I can't take it away from you guys. You have the most beautiful women. You really, 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 really have some beautiful women. I mean, really. And uh, the only thing I don't like, I don't like it when this girl knows she is so beautiful and the emotion on her face is like unimpressed. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Like, oh, f off. I don't give a shit. You just lost me. Like, f you. F you. You just became so ugly. You could have been everything. Look at what you've got. You're perfect. And you ruin it with this spoiled personality. But that's only a small percentage of people. Most of the women I meet in Russia are tremendously kind. They're very, very caring. I, f I think they're fucking beautiful. This is a beautiful country. I just don't like the whole fake plastic duck lips. I'm so important. Like, oh, it's just off. Okay, look, 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 I'm gonna give you this. Message to all Russian women. Like, I really need you to see this. I know that the most popular girls on Instagram are all doing the same thing. Everything's fake and they have this emotion in their face. I'm better than you. You're nothing, I'm everything. Look at my life, look how I live. I'm better than you. F that, don't try and be like that. They are bad role models. Stop following these people. They will make you miserable. I don't know a guy that finds these chicks hot. Like, this is not attractive, it's not attractive. Who wants to be with somebody who spends their life like this? Who wants to, s you really wanna have dinner with a girl and all she's thinking about is how amazing I am? You're so lucky to be here. Oh my God, you're so blessed by my food. Like, f off! <laughs> Nobody needs this shit. I don't need to babysit some 30 year old woman. Like, I, come on. Anyway. Look, if you want a guy that likes that kind of woman, you need to aim for a better kind of guy. If you want a guy that's only gonna love you because you have fake lips and big tits, I promise you need a better guy because he's gonna go cheat on you in three years. Like, that is not a high quality of man. No, f that mentality. Change your mentality. Change your mentality, change your ideas. It's not enough. Women do not want this man. Women want a good man. Women want a friend. They want somebody they can spend their life with. They want somebody who's gonna be a good partner, a good husband, a strong father, a strong man. And this quality of man, an ethical, pure man, doesn't give a shit about some woman who's all into herself with the Louis Vuitton and she's so unimpressed with life and she's sad all the time. I don't wanna be around somebody like that. I don't like people that are so interested in themselves. There's nothing more uninteresting to me than somebody who is constantly trying to be interesting. They're interesting, they're interesting. No, I want somebody who's interested. I want somebody whose attention is out. You are this big. I am like two by two. I am a tiny little box. Why would I keep all of my attention here? This is tiny, we have a whole universe. I want somebody who's interested in life, who's interested in other people, who's interested in living, not who's interested in themselves and their abs. And is my teeth perfect? And like, oh dude, there's more to life than your teeth. Like, and whether your nipples are like this or like this or like, who gives a shit, dude? You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be the prime minister. That's what I thought I would be when I grow up. Uh, when I was five years old, six years old, seven years old, I thought I would become a prime minister. Um, now I cannot imagine a worse job. No matter what you do, people will hate you. No decision you will make will be the right decision. You cannot win. Uh, I don't have a very strong political opinion. I'm not really a political guy because honestly, I'm not depending on a politician to make my life. I don't expect a politician to help me. I don't believe they will. All I'm praying for is that a politician doesn't f up my life even more. Like, can you please just stop f***ing things up? Like, can you do nothing? The perfect politician to me is somebody who does nothing. If I will become a politician, I just won't do anything. I won't pass any more stupid bullshit laws. I'm not gonna change everything. I'm just gonna let you do your life. Like, I'll stop getting in the way. The best thing for me a politician can do is just stop getting in the way. And, um, you know, all, all I see from politics and laws is it makes my life harder. I want a simple life. I wanna play music and do what I wanna do. And you come in my way with these rules and you can do this and you can't do this and here is the tax and here are the laws. And, you're not making my life easy. This isn't helping me. You're not my friend. You're being an enemy. You're taking on the role of an enemy. All of your actions are stopping me doing what I should be doing. That's not what a friend does. This isn't support. And um, so that's my opinion on government. I'm definitely not expecting that they will make my life better. I don't care, like, I'm, I'm totally uninterested.
I take responsibility for my life. I, I take that position that, okay, these guys are not gonna help. I don't give a shit. I'm gonna make my life. These guys are gonna make my life more hard. Okay, I gotta work harder anyway. I know that's not really an answer to your question. <laughs> so if I'm a politician, what would I do? I would probably get rid of around 80% of the laws. They're just pointless. I would reduce tax hugely. And I would also reduce government spending hugely because I think a minimal government would be a better government just to allow people to do what they want to do without them getting in the way. As far as I'm concerned, the government has to do two things. They have to stop people killing each other with a nice police, and they have to stop other people killing us with a nice army, and that's it. I don't need anything else from you. You just make this a safe environment and then f off. I'm very really lucky that I get to travel a lot in my life, and I've noticed that we are more similar than we are different, and that the differences are really quite small and the similarities are really quite huge. So everybody always wants to comment on the differences between people. But all that does is create a division which doesn't really exist. Russian men and English men are very similar. We all want romance. We all want to take care of people. We all want to lead. We all want to be good examples. We all want to have great friendships. We all want to achieve great things and, and leave a, a big mark on this world. Uh, I think universally, uh, people are like this. Some people, they think they get their energy from their body. I don't get my energy from my body. I give my body energy. So, for example, I don't know if ever you've been tired and you go to the gym and then you feel more awake after the gym. For me, it's like this. The more I do, the more energy I get. I get energy from action. And, um, okay, sometimes I don't sleep so much, but uh, as long as I'm active and I'm doing things and I'm passionate, I don't feel tired. And then once every seven days, I, you know, I have a coma. <sighs> Everywhere and nowhere. It is the most profound aesthetic spiritual experience. It is more addictive than anything else I've ever come close to. I can go without food. I can go without drugs. I can go without sex. I can go without sleep. I can go without any of these things. There is something so pure, visceral, completely transcending about whatever music does to me. And when I'm the center of that music, when it's coming from me, I just feel like a tiny, 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 tiny little light in a very, very, very big universe. And all I can feel is space. And it's so peaceful, it's so serene. I'm going crazy, I'm going crazy. You see this crazy guy inside of me is completely serene. It is just this moment of pure, pure freedom. And the most special times in my life, and I'm lucky that I get to have this often, the most special times in my life is I'm in a room and I'm playing something. And it's like everybody lives in this little cage called me. My worries, my fear, my job, my wife, my... Everybody's in this cage and they're constantly thinking about themselves and their attention is on themselves, their problems, their worries. And it feels like this, it feels like I have this infinite space and there's lots of people in cages all around me and they can't really feel what I'm feeling. But there is this special moment and it occurs in the concert, sometimes after one song, sometimes after eight songs, and I can feel these cages start to open. I can feel these people are coming into my space, that they're starting to feel this too, that they're starting to get this. And all of a sudden my space isn't so empty, it's still quiet, it's still peaceful, it's still perfect, but now there are hundreds of us and we are there and it is enlightening. This is a profound, profound spiritual experience. It's, I mean, I'm sorry to sound like an 18th century poet, but it's no joke. It is absolutely beyond. It, it's religious. My purpose in this life is to help people. My purpose in this life is to give. I just want to give. And the only thing which is changing in my life is that I'm able to give to more people. More people are letting me give them something. They're, I don't know about popular and unpopular, I don't really give a shit. But what I like is that when I'm playing music, people are there and they wanna be there and they're having an experience and I'm giving them this. It's all I really care about. The fact that I'm getting to do this more and more is a fucking privilege, really. Uh, how many Instagram followers I have, how many fucking people, I don't care about that. I don't care at all. 
What I like is that I'm just able to be of greater service. I'm able to be of greater value. That's what makes me proud of myself. That's what makes me feel good when I put my head on the pillow at night. It's knowing what I did. It's knowing the experience that everybody had because I came and, and, and I was honest and I was open and, and, you know, we had this experience together. That's what matters to me. All I want to do in this life is live in that moment. Everything else is bullshit. Honestly speaking, like, I, <laughs> and this is not offensive, I love to be here and talk, but I honestly don't really care. I want to be doing what I do. I want to just be in my moment. I want to be on the stage surrounded by people. And the only good thing about starting to find my popularity is that I get to do that more. And um, that's all I really give a shit about. I was in Rio de Janeiro one time and uh, I went there and I played at the carnival. I didn't plan on playing at the carnival. I just wanted to go. And I arrive and they have these buses that drive through the streets and the bus has no roof. And on top of the bus, there is a band and they're playing this music. And somehow, because like, I'm the only white guy and I don't get a tan, so everybody calls me Vampiro because it's like all these beautiful tanned people and then me. If you ever see this comic book, Where's Wally? And there is like 10,000 people and then he's just in the middle, it's like this. There's all these beautiful tanned people and then me. Just kind of dancing. And uh, on the bus, they see me and they, they bring me on the bus. And I'm playing on the bus, I'm wearing my swim shorts, all I can see is people. I mean, really, as far as you can see is people. So then it's the evening and I'm so full of life. And uh, I find the guy who I was on the bus with and he has his keyboard and he's like, let's just play in the streets. I'm like, oh God, dude, I would love to do that. So we get the keyboard, we put it in this little street in Ipanema. And uh, I put the keyboard across these two stacks and I'm just playing. And there are people dancing in the streets. It's so beautiful and I have my eyes closed and all of a sudden I can feel something has changed. I can just sort of feel that nobody is dancing anymore. I can feel something and I open my eyes and I look up and there is a guy with a gun like this about that far from my head. He's just standing and he's completely serious and I'm looking like this is it. This is it. This is how I end. 21 years old, shot in the head in Rio. I knew this would be how I'd die. I knew I would die in some stupid way like this. And I'm, I'm standing there, this moment, I feel like it lasted for like 10 minutes. Maybe it was like 20 seconds, I don't know. But he stood there like this, and then the worst thing happens. Everybody stops dancing, and everybody crowds around in a circle. And I'm like, no, why are you doing this? Now he has to kill me. Now you're all looking at him, it's like you're telling him to kill me. So everybody is stood there quietly and I'm there and I'm still playing the music, by the way. I don't know why the f I'm still playing the music, but I'm still playing the music. And he's looking at me and I'm like, I'm just sure, I'm absolutely sure that I'm gonna die. He's got that look in his eyes where he doesn't give a shit. He's not scared, he's not like, he's not like this. He's like, he looks like a guy who kills people for fun. And I'm like, this is it, it's over. And I'm stood there like, and um, he just goes like this. <laughs> and then walks off. And I'm like, <laughs> I immediately stopped playing piano. I left, I went back to the, I was staying in a little hostel. I went back to the hostel and I, I wrote in my diary all the reasons I'm grateful to be alive. That was the most uh, strange show of my life, really. All my life, what is an artist? An artist is somebody with a certain frame of mind. I'm not, looking for luck. I don't want to find luck. I will create luck. I'm not looking for love. I will create love. I'm not looking to find my purpose, to find my meaning. I create my meaning. I create my purpose. This is the mindset of anybody who is artistic. I create, I create, I create. And okay, oh, I was in a bank one time. It didn't work for me. For some people, maybe it's beautiful. For me, it's not my life. And now I have the privilege, the absolute joy of being a musician. And if there comes a time in my life where that's not something I want to do anymore, I will keep creating. I will create in a new direction, but I will only get bigger. I'm only interested in doing something bigger, in something more, in something more challenging, in something more valuable, something more that's going to take more from me, that's going to require more of me. I want to give of myself to this world. I want to give, give, give. And I don't want to get to a place where it's just comfortable. 
I never want to get to a place where it's comfortable. I want to go inside of me to the uncomfortable place and, and give of myself. And right now, the way that I love to do that is in music. But even at Christmas, at Christmas, I finished the project I've been working on for seven years, building a music school. It's okay, it's still related to music. This took a lot. This took a lot. It's, there has been no change in music education for 1800 years. It is not easy to come along and make something new. But I wanted to go that. I wanted to go to a place which was difficult and give of myself. And I will never stop doing this. Maybe I will be an author. Maybe I will be... I just can't imagine not being a musician. It's impossible to me to imagine not playing a piano. I don't... My life is this piano. If my life was a piano a long time before investment banking. I play piano every day since I'm two years old. And uh, just because it's no longer my... I don't, I just can't imagine a world where I'm not doing this. What will you do to me? You'll say, okay, you can make no more money from music. So what? I didn't make any music. The first 15 years of my life, I made no money from music. I still play every day. You can't take that away from me. You can't take my passion. You can't take my creativity. You can't take my courage. What will I lose? What can I lose? I will lose my clothes. I will lose my job. I, whatever. Like, you, you can't take the things which I value. I can't lose it. That is a scary, scary question. That is a scary question because you're touching on the thing I want the most in this world. And that is scary. It's good scary, but it's scary. Uh, it keeps changing, honestly. Uh, when I left my job and I started playing music in the street, my only goal was to keep going. And eventually my goal became, can I make enough money to keep doing this? Can I get to a point in my life where I can just be a musician? And I'm lucky that from the minute I tried it, I've always had that. I've always been able to support myself with music. And then the goal grew. It was like, mm, could I travel and play in different countries? Play in different streets, play to different people. And then, mm, okay. All the time the goal is going forward. But honestly, I've always really known the goal. And the goal is pretty fucking scary because it's so big, it intimidates me. And this is as honest as I can be. I want to leave such a huge effect on this planet. And it's scary to say, because I'm so far from this goal right now, it's scary to sit here and actually tell you the size of my goal because I'm scared I will look stupid <laughs> because I'm so far from this. But I want to play to stadiums. I want to go around the planet and be a hero and a friend to everybody in this world. I want to be known as a friend to everybody on this planet. The people who inspire me did not do small things. Bob Marley. Ah, oh, Bob Marley. He comes into this world with the most pure, pure, beautiful message. One love. And he takes his message and he puts it around the world. He's my hero. I have so many heroes like that. But I would be lying to myself if I wanted to say, oh, you know, I have these humble small goals. I'd just like to, uh, you know. No, I want to, I want to dominate. But I don't want to dominate for me. I'm not, I'm, I'm, this isn't about me. I got my pleasure a long time ago. When I'm playing in the street, it's enough. The pleasure doesn't honestly change if I'm playing in the street or if I'm playing for Vogue or if I'm playing for Louis Vuitton or if I'm playing a huge show for 3,000 people. The pleasure I get is the same. It's the same pleasure I get when I'm sitting in my bedroom and I'm just lost. I'm just beautifully lost. But I think about the effect I want to have. I think about the person I want to be the legacy that I want to create, the impact I want to put on this planet. It's not small. I, I want to be the biggest of the biggest of the biggest. And not because I want to be big, but because I want my work to reach people, because I want to change people. I want to do something in this world. And it is scary to sit here and say that when I'm currently so far from it. But it's a game and it's something to chase and it's something which wakes me up in the morning. And it inspires me, that size of goal inspires me. Maybe I'll never get there. Maybe that's okay. But it's something that I want. It's something that I believe in. It's something which I believe is valuable and important and a good use of my time and a good use of my life and skill. Um, yeah. I remember a moment when we were sitting in the kitchen and uh, it's not a big memory. It's not a Disney World. It was on a Sunday morning and my mum had cooked some breakfast 
And I just remember sitting in a chair and I look around the table. There is my dad, my brother, my mother. And everybody is laughing really, really hard. And my brother is crying. He's laughing so much, he's crying. And my mom is laughing and my dad is laughing. And I remember just sitting at my table being so happy with my family and so happy at the life that we're sharing. It's one of my favorite memories. It was nothing, it was just a breakfast on a Sunday and we were just making jokes with each other. But often in a family you have these moments, you fight, you're, you're living your life. And this was just one of those moments of, of complete pleasure. And um, it's fantastic. I, I love my family. This is gonna sound so stupid. But when I was a child, <laughs> um, I used to have this imagination that I thought when I would get old, I would have the head of a rabbit and the body of a man. And uh, I would sing songs to millions and millions of people with a rabbit head. And um, I thought I would have a red car with no roof and it would be very sunny. For some reason, the weather in England would change and it would be sunny all the time. Um, and I imagined I would have a wife and lots of baby rabbits. <laughs> I was not a normal child. The only person, like I'm trying to think of some funny thing and the only person I can think of is my best friend. Um, my best friend is a man called Craig and he is the most unique man I ever met. I, he leads a group of people. He works basically for free. He's a volunteer. He devotes his life to helping people, to charity. He's an amazing family. He's only ever been with one girl. He knew when he was young, he wants one girl. And he's a really attractive guy, really charismatic guy. He wants one girl. And he stays and he stays. He sees this girl, he persists, he persists, he persists. Eventually they start dating. I think it's like six weeks later they get married. Now they have two kids. From the outside you would think, oh, it's just a normal story, a guy, you know, yeah. It's not normal. This guy has so much integrity. He has so much ethical backbone. He lives so true to his beliefs. Like, it inspires me how much this man can just stay true to what he believes. He won't do anything. You can offer him a million dollars to break one of his rules. He will not do it. And it's not because he has $10 million. Honestly speaking, and maybe he will see this, maybe he won't. He doesn't have any money. But you could not buy anything from him. This guy is so, so committed to his values. I'm constantly inspired by him. He lives to help other people and he will let nothing stop him. He's, he's the most selfless, beautiful man I know. I realized something uh, a couple years ago. People were, somebody was asking me this question, like if you can lose one of your senses, what would it be? Uh, touch or smell or sight and I think about it and I was like, I would, you can take my eyes. And they're like, what? Like, they expect me to say something different, I think. And I realized the best things in my life I always have my eyes closed for. Uh, when I play my music. When you kiss somebody you love. When I'm cooking, I cook with my eyes closed, it's a little dangerous. Um, when I'm dancing, when I'm laughing, I always have my eyes closed. These moments, the moments of the greatest pleasure, I am blind. It's like pleasure is so overwhelming, you don't even need your eyes anymore. And it's funny because in all of these moments where you close your eyes, you become in a different world because you don't have this world invalidating what you're feeling. You know, if you feel like incredible and amazing and then you open your eyes and you're in the bathroom and you're just singing in the shower, it's like invalidative. The greatest pleasures in life for me are these moments with your eyes closed when you're bigger than life. I get it when I'm cooking, listening to Frank Sinatra. That for me is one of the greatest joys. I get it when I'm laying on a beach and the temperature of the air is the same temperature as my body and it's blowing this beautiful warm wind on me. I get it, ah, I remember this kiss. I kissed the girl that I just, I, and we kissed for hours and it was fucking perfect. These are the pleasures of my life. So I've been doing Scientology about five years, maybe six years. Um, it is responsible for 95% of my success. It is definitely responsible for 99% of my happiness and this peace that I find in my life. Um, 
I don't know what to tell you. The sub it's a tremendously misunderstood subject. A lot of people don't like the change it would bring. You know, everybody profits from the world the way it is right now. There are people who make a lot of money through the world being how it is. It's not a perfect world. And if some people come along and they say, hey, we can improve things, maybe they don't want that. And um, so that's that. If I will speak personally about my journey in Scientology, it's the most valuable thing I ever did. It's the greatest gift I ever gave myself. Um, it is stunning. The subject of Scientology is you. The subject of Scientology is life. It's not about faith. It's not about your beliefs. It's about your actions. It's about understanding life and then taking action to improve it. And that philosophy aligns very, very closely with my own philosophy. And the kindness that is within that is overwhelming. And honestly, it's, uh, it is responsible for 99% of my happiness and 95% of my success. Okay, who I can have dinner with? The first would be my father. Uh, he died when I'm 15, and I would love to know what he thinks about me now. I'd love to know what he thinks of my life, what I'm doing. I'd love to hear his advice, even though I wouldn't agree with it. Um, honestly, that's all I want. I wouldn't want anybody else. I'd just like to have dinner with my dad. There's a beautiful thing about my dad. We never agreed. Uh, all my life, we never agreed. All we did was fight. I didn't agree with anything he said. But I miss his influence so much. And we never became friends. He was always a father to me. And we never got to that age where we became friends. And I see a lot of people have that with their dad. And I'd just love to meet him. I'd love to sit and have a dinner. I'd love to ask him so many questions. And... Um, Oh, that's a really, 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 like, I really feel that. I really would like to have a dinner with my dad. More than any celebrity. More than Einstein, more than Mozart. I'd like a dinner with my dad. It doesn't, none of us are guaranteed success. Who cares? Success is whatever. What makes a happy life is, am I living the life I want to live? Am I living the life I choose? Or am I living a life because my father said I have to do it? Am I at university because my parents said I have to do it? Am I working this job because I'm trying to impress everybody else? Am I trying to buy a car just so everybody will think I'm special? Am I trying to just marry some hot chicks so all my friends will think, oh wow, he's got a hot chick. Like, I don't want my son to live in this trap of constantly living on other people's values, on other people's ideas, and needing all of their permission to exist. So the only thing I would say to my son is, look, you know everything. Do what you think is right. Do what you think is noble and worthy and live in accordance with your rules. I have nothing to tell you. Whatever you decide to do, I will support you. If it's good, if it's worthy, if you believe in it, I will support you. You don't need anything else from me. I think this is the purpose of life. Honestly, I think this entire fucking planet is one big playground. And I feel like 70% of the people don't really know that and they're taking it far too seriously. And um, yeah, I, I think the reason to be born is just to enjoy this world and to help other people enjoy this world and to make it better and to enjoy creating things and just being together and having fun and um, spreading all that is good in this world. I think naturally human beings just want to improve things. They go into an area, they want to make it better. You know, you bring a woman into a home and she makes it beautiful you bring a guy into a space and he wants to start building things and fixing everything like uh, there's something beautiful about the human character it constantly wants to create and it constantly wants to just improve things and make it beautiful and I think life is nothing more than this playful attempt at just playing with your toys the experience I have when I'm playing is so fucking big I've often like I finished playing and I'm like what was that it's like somebody just ripped me out of my body and I was somewhere else for two hours. Where the fuck was I? And sometimes I'm playing for like six hours, seven hours, eight hours, and it feels like five minutes. There is times, so many times in my life, especially, I remember being a kid. I come home from school when I'm a kid. It's like 4 p.m. 
and I'm sitting and I'm playing and I have my eyes closed and I'm just playing and sometimes I'm playing one riff, this riff, 10, 15 seconds. And then I open my eyes and it's 2 a.m. in the morning and I'm like, whoa. And I feel strange. I feel strange being in a body. I feel strange in the room. I'm like, where am I? I was not here. I was in a much bigger place. It's not about me. My life is not about me. I hope that they will take great pleasure from my work. I hope that my music will still be around and that people will take great pleasure. I plan on writing books. I hope that these books are still valuable and I hope it still means something to somebody. I read books that are 3,000 years old, 5,000 years old. Bhagavad Gita, Nicomachean Ethics by Aristotle. These books are fucking incredible. You ask me what I think about Aristotle, I don't know. I don't know the guy. I don't know about his relationships. I don't know about his political beliefs. I actually do because I read his book, but what I, what I value is the work that he left. The value he gave to the planet has lasted 2,000 years. And I don't really care what people will think about me in 200 years, but I really do hope that the work I create and the value that I create is still here. I hope that I'm still being valuable in 200 years. Whether or not they like me, I don't really give a shit.